Dear Honorable Viewers, All the Students of MHC in Entomology, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. Welcome to the discussion on the structure of a typical insect leg and their modifications functionally. If you've already subscribed in my channel, thank you very much. If not, please subscribe now to get the notification of next video. For this, click on the subscribe button below the video and then click on the bell icon and finally select the option all. Important questions on this discussion is describe the structure of a typical insect leg and their modifications functionally. Leg of insect consists of following, following parts. Number one, coxa. The vessel segment of the leg articulating with the pleuron or also the sternum. The lateral post articular area is meron. Number two, trochanter. The usual second segment of the insect leg probably composed of two united trochanteral segment. In some cases, odonata showing a vision, division between its component segment. Number three, femur. The third and usually the largest segment of the insect leg. Number four, tibia. The fourth segment of the leg. Number five, tarsus. The fifth segment of the leg usually divided in from, from two to five sub segments or tarsomeres. Look at the picture. A typical leg of insect. Number six, pretarsus. The terminal part of the leg distal to the tarsus, including median remnants of the dactylopodite and the lateral claws or anguish in most larvae a simple claw-like segment. Number A. Aerolium. The usual median lobe of the pretarsus arising between the bases of the claws. Number B, palvili, lateral lobes of the pretarsus arising between the bases of the claws. Ventral lobes of the tarsal subsegments, euplantuli, are sometimes called tarsal palvili. Look at the picture. Number C, Empodium, a median lobes or spine-like process arising ventrally between the bases of the pretarsal claws, usually from the anguitractor plate. Modification of the legs. While the legs are normally adapted for walking, many insects have them modified for a variety of functions. In the grasshoppers and crickets, the hind legs are saltatorial, adapted for leaping or jumping. The femur is greatly enlarged giving articulation for the large muscles of the tibia which are used in jumping. In the praying mantis, 
the four legs are raptorial modified for grasping the prey. The legs are modified for plunging or scansorial in the body laws. The tibia being stout and bearing at one end a thumb-like process with a distal spine. The thumb is opposed to the single tarsal segment and a curved pretarsal claw while grasping the body. The tarsus and pretarsus work against the thumb. The hind legs are again adapted for swimming or natatorial habit in aquatic beetles like gyrinus and dytiscus, where the femur, tibia and the first four tarsal segment are broad and flat with dense flat CT serving as a horse. The forelegs are modified for digging in the name of cicada. The femur being enlarged and very stout and provided with strong sclerotized spines. The forelegs are also adapted for the fossorial habit in Grylotalpa, which has a very stout femur, a short stout tibia, and the tarsus bearing strong cutting shears or tooth like loops for cutting the roots. In several insects, legs are modified to hold the females while mating. For example, in the males of dytiscus there is a sucker like apparatus in the four tarsus the first three tarsal segments are greatly expanded forming flat disc with a number of suckers on the lower surface the legs of the honeybee are adapted for many functions, there being the pollen comb on the on the inner surface of the first segment of the hind tarsus to remove the pollen from the body. The pollen basket or the corbiculi on the outer surfaces of the hind TB, the scraper or the spa in the apex of the middle tibia to scrap the pollen from the baskets and the antennal comb on the front legs to remove the pollen from the antennae. In addition, to these modifications in many insects, example Gracia, Thysanoptera and Embyoptera, there are special adaptations such as the presence of a protrusible vesicle or bladder in thrips, which is extruded by blood pressure and helps the insect to work on the surface. In embed the first tarsal segment of the forelegs becomes greatly inflated by the presence of silk glands used in the construction of silken tunnels within which the insect live. The typical working legs or ambulatorial legs 
have the basic pattern of structures. Look at the picture of various types of modification of legs. Swimming leg, digging leg, jumping leg, pull and carrying leg, and eye cleaning, brush foot. After general and applied entomology by K. K. Nair, T. N. Ananda Krishna, S. V. David, Pace, 1819. Thank you very much for watching and keep watching for the next video.